Hey guys, how's it going? Seth Williams here from retipsier.com and in this video, I'm gonna do my annual review on my Fundrise investment. Fundrise is a real estate crowdfunding platform that allows investors like you and me to invest relatively small amounts of money into not just one piece of real estate, but a pool of real estate. And we can do this through what they call e-REITs. And Fundrise is able to make a return on this money by taking it and either lending it out to developers who would develop properties and then they collect loan payments with interest from them, or Fundrise can go out and buy up properties and improve them. And then they earn a return by leasing out the property and earn earning rent revenue and also when they eventually resell that property. So something unique about Fundrise that is a little bit different from other real estate crowdfunding platforms is that with Fundrise, you don't have to be an accredited investor in order to get involved. And the reason it's kind of problematic for a lot of people to be accredited investors is that an accredited investor needs to have a million dollar net worth not including their personal residence or they need to have an annual income of at least $200,000 individually for the past two years or over $300,000 per year for the past two years with their spouse. You can also become a accredited investor if you meet certain professional qualifications, but even that, for the most part, is going to keep most average people out of the accredited investor classification. It's helpful to have something like Fundrise that makes it open and available to more normal people. So why do I make these annual review videos every year? Well, back when I first did this in 2017, I didn't really expect much feedback or you know comments or likes or views or anything on that video, but it kind of blew up and I was really surprised by it because you know real estate crowdfunding is not my primary thing by any stretch. I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing to get involved with and just to test out one of these sites and see what happened. And so I did another review video the following year and then the year after that. And every single year, people love it and want to hear more and post all kinds kinds of great questions and comments. And so I just thought, hey, let's keep this thing going. And every single year, I'll try to address and answer as many of those questions and comments as I can. And actually, more importantly, this is a pretty big year because back when I first put my money in, the understanding was that I wouldn't be able to get my principal investment back for about five years. And guess what? We are now at that five-year milestone. Yeah! So I haven't gotten into my account yet, but uh, I'm about to, and I'm gonna go in there and see if I can get that money back and what that process looks like and how difficult it is. And if I can't yet, how much longer do I have to wait? So I know that's a big objection or maybe not objection, but just a drawback that a lot of people have with this kind of investment is just tying up your principal for five years. That's a long time to not be able to get it back or to not be able to get it back without some kind of penalty. Fundrise actually does allow you to request it back early if you want, but depending Depending on your account level, there could be a 1% penalty if you try to get this money back early. And that's actually one new thing I've noticed with Fundrise this past year is that they created this new starter plan that allows you to invest as little as $10. And one of the benefits of this starter plan is that the money goes into what they call an interval fund. And if your money is in this interval fund, then you can actually get it back prior to the five years without a penalty. And one interesting thing back when I first started doing this was I told Fundrise to automatically reinvest my dividend. Dividends. And one thing I didn't realize I was saying back when I told them to do that is that every single time it reinvests one of those dividends, I can't get that dividend back for five years. So say if I reinvest them at the first quarter or the fifth quarter or the 20th quarter, that five-year timeline for that single dividend payment starts then, not back when I first put the original $1,000 in. So even though I can get my initial $1,000 back, all those dividends are gonna be timed out for five years into the future, which in hindsight, I kinda wish I hadn't done that, but you live and learn. So like I said, every time I post one of these videos, there's a lot of really good questions and comments that come in on those videos throughout the year. So I'm gonna try to take time to answer each one of those questions to the extent that I can and the extent that I actually know the answer. And also, I just wanna be abundantly clear, I say this every single year when I do this, don't take this video as my endorsement or recommendation or suggestion that you should be investing your money with Fundrise. This is not financial advice, I'm just showing you 
my real world results from investing with the platform. I'm not saying Fundrise is the best returns you're ever gonna get. In fact, I know it's not. There's a lot of other things I could be doing with my money that would make a whole lot more than what Fundrise is making. But I think what Fundrise brings to the table is first of all, it is probably the most passive income I've ever seen. Like I literally spend zero minutes per year thinking about my Fundrise investment or putting any of my time or effort into it. The only time I spend on this investment is when I'm doing this review every single year. So this really is passive income. Again, if I hadn't had my dividends reinvested, it would be income, but I haven't seen a penny of it because I've been putting those dividends back in again and again every time I get them. And Fundrise also offers a really convenient way to get involved investing in real estate, even if you have no time to put into it whatsoever. It's really not hard at all as long as you have at least $10 to invest invest with the starter plan, you're a U.S. citizen or permanent resident currently residing in the U.S., and you're 18 years old or older. If you can check those boxes, you can get involved. And I'll also say RE Tipster does have an affiliate relationship with Fundrise, and you can see our affiliate link beneath this video. We earn a very, very small commission if anybody clicks through that link and signs up for an account and starts investing, but that should not by any means be misconstrued as a recommendation or suggestion for you to invest with Fundrise. And also keep in mind, Fundrise is not a risk-free investment. It's like anything where it's possible that you can lose money in it. Fundrise has a very good track record of going up and up and up because the market has been going up and up and up since I've had my money in there, but it doesn't mean that's going to keep happening forever. And it has a lot to do with the people who manage the money through Fundrise. So just keep that in mind. Only invest the amount that you're willing to risk. And uh, yeah, I would say that about pretty much any investment and this one is no different. So with that all out of the way, I'm going to jump into the website right now and show you how things are looking and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here we go. Here's my dashboard. And uh, right away when you log in here, you can just see some basic information about how things are going. We can sort of see the entire timeline of where this investment has gone since I first put my thousand dollars in back in 2017 and uh, steadily gone up. There's no dips or anything like that. It's just slowly gone up and up and up. And uh, this thing over here where it shows the return. So it seems like this looks a little bit different every year when I get in here and look at this. Some years the dividends are way higher and the appreciation is lower, maybe even negative. This past year from 2021 to 2022, appreciation is way up. I don't think I've ever seen it that high before. And that looks pretty consistent with just what I've seen in the overall US real estate market where values have just gone crazy just because of the housing crisis and that kind of thing. The dividends are not necessarily going crazy, but overall it uh, contributes to, you know, a pretty decent return. And one thing to keep in mind is that it's April, 2022, as I'm recording this. So all the numbers that you see here for a 2022 year to date, this is only the first quarter of the year. So this is not really an accurate portrayal of what the entire year is going to look like. And that's going to come up a couple times as we go through this. So first of all, I guess if we go over here to performance, let's go check this out right here. We can can see basically the historical performance of my investment. Just starting up here, I guess we'll uh, look at this little chart. So this tells us where my money is currently invested. And the way that I have this set up is every time Fundrise pays out a dividend, they don't pay it to me. I just tell them to automatically reinvest that money back into another E-REIT. And we can also see how that money is allocated. So remember with Fundrise, the idea is not to invest in one or two or even 10 properties, but a pool of a lot of properties properties and not just a lot of different properties, but different project types. As we can see here, there's four different categories that this is sort of broken out into. There's fixed income, core plus, value add, and opportunistic. And this was something that was new last year. Prior to that, they labeled these as either equity or debt. And equity deals meant that Fundrise would take your money and literally go out and purchase a property. So your money was tied up with the ownership of that property and it would make money by appreciation and rent revenue and that kind of thing. And debt deals was where they would take the money and lend it out to a developer and then make money through interest payments as that developer would pay the loan back. But uh, again, now they have these four different categories. I'm just gonna quick explain what these things are because at first it was not clear to me what these things meant. 
So fixed income are the deals where the money is being lent out and that money is being paid back with interest. So whatever projects you see in this category, that's what type of investment that is. And Core Plus is when Fundrise acquires a newly built asset that's expected to produce steady cash flow. Value add is more of a rehab situation where they're buying an underperforming property and fixing it up and renovating it with the plan of expanding it, maybe adding more tenants or increasing rent, that kind of thing. And then the opportunistic strategy is more of like the long-term prospects where they might build a new building from the ground up. So it's not really going to start generating income or revenue anytime soon, but it will over the long term and should probably do pretty well because they're able to plan everything out exactly the way they want it. So that's kind of the breakdown of what those things are and what they mean. And it's kind of a cool little interactive thing where you can click on any one of these things and see a lot more specifics about like the actual property itself. We can go and view details and see pictures and a lot more statistics and that kind of thing. And we can do that for pretty much any one of these things. You can spend all kinds of time doing that uh, if you want to, if you find that fun. And with these year to date returns, again, this is just the first quarter so far. We can view it as a percentage or in dollars and you can see the returns for each individual e-reit that my money is plugged into and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. And then down here for annual returns, we can see the historical timeline for everything for as long as my money has been in here. So we can see back in 2017, when I put my thousand dollars in, that was in March of 2017. So it wasn't in there for the full year. That's why it says partial. And then we can see the total percentage of return in 2018 and 2019. 2020 was down a little bit. 2021 was up a lot. And then this is where it's at so far for 2022. So it looks like if it's going to match 2021, there's a lot of catching up to do. And uh, we can also see the uh, all time average. And we can see this timeline right here. Looks like the past year has been really pretty good for Fundrise. And again, I think this is really driven by just the crazy increases in property values that we've seen throughout the country just because of the housing shortage that has happened throughout the whole pandemic. I haven't really dug into all the details to figure out like where the bulk of this appreciation is coming from, which properties, which markets or anything like that. Again, the whole reason I put my money in Fundrise is so that I don't have to spend any time looking at it and I can just let them do what they do and watch the amount go up, hopefully. And so far, that's what's been happening. And again, with this, we can switch between dollars or percentages. And, uh, you know, every time I look at this, I just keep wondering, man, what if I had thrown like 10,000 into Fundrise back in 2017 or a hundred thousand or something like that. And that's one of those things in hindsight. Of course, that looks like a great idea. Although another argument I've seen a lot in the comments of these previous annual reviews I've done is that I could have just as well put this in the stock market and seen probably similar returns, if not better returns in some cases, depending on what I invested in. And the difference with the stock market is that it's a lot more liquid. You could actually get the money back whenever you want. You don't have this whole five year timeline restriction like you do with Fundrise. And uh, honestly, I think that's a pretty valid point. And uh, I don't really have any solid responses or arguments to that. I think that is a really nice thing about the stock market. Although the stock market does not necessarily move in tandem with the real estate market. And if some people want to have their money in real estate instead of stocks, then that's something that Fundrise can bring to the table. And with Fundrise, unlike with most real estate investments, I don't have to spend any time, like not even a single minute looking at any of this stuff or dealing with anybody, any tenants, any contractors, any lenders, nothing. I just throw my money in Fundrise and they do what they do. So if you're looking for something that really does not require any time from you, I think that's what Fundrise can bring to the table. So if you go over here and check out the portfolio, let's go see where all my money is. So back in 2017, when I first put my money in here, I put my thousand dollars into the East Coast E-REIT, and that was a pretty arbitrary decision. There wasn't any particular reason why. It was just one of the ones that they had available at that time. So I said, sure. Let's go with that. And what I told them to do back then when I put my money in was to just automatically reinvest my dividends. So don't put that money back in my bank account each quarter when I make a dividend. Just throw it back into whatever you want. As you can see, they didn't put it all back into the East Coast e-read. They sort of spread it out among a bunch of other e-reads that they have. You know, you can see down here with the e-read 14. Looks like I've got uh, 11 cents in there. So I'm curious to see the prospects for that. Hopefully that'll do some heavy lifting towards my retirement. 
And down here, we can see all the different projects that the money is spread out among. We can see a list in different ways, or we can see the actual map to see where these properties and projects are throughout the US. Looks like most of them are in the southern half of the US, which makes a lot of sense. And then if we go up here to transactions, we can see all of the transactions to date. And we can see down here, this was the first one when I put my money in back in March 27 of 2017. These are all the dividends that were paid out, but then reinvested back into Fundrise. And uh, the dividends, at least this most recent one, is honestly not looking that great. In fact, I think that might be the single worst one in the history of this entire investment. But again, if we go back here to the overview, we can see for whatever reason, the appreciation seems to be what's carrying most of the weight so far this year, not necessarily the dividends. So yeah, that's an overview of all the transactions. And uh, there's you know a few questions that come in again and again and again that uh, I try to answer every year when I do this, but I'll just quick hit some of those again. So as I mentioned, one of the inherent drawbacks of investing with Fundrise is that when you put your money in, there is a five-year timeline where you basically can't get your money back until it hits that five years. Or actually, I shouldn't say that. You can get your money back, but you are potentially subject to a penalty if you request that back earlier. Although, so Fundrise does have a new plan. I think it's called the Starter, where you can invest a very small amount and you can request that money back without that penalty. But with the plan that I signed up with, with my thousand dollars, I basically did it with the understanding that I wasn't going to be able to touch that money for at least five years, and I was fine with that. That wasn't really a problem with me. And you know, really, the whole idea with this is to be a long-term investment where I don't really touch it; it just sits there and no big deal. But some people have a huge problem with that. And to those people, I would say you should not be investing your money here. That's not the idea with this. This is more of a long-term buy and hold investment with real estate that you don't have to touch. So if that's what you're looking for, that's who Fundrise might be for. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to invest your money here at all. Please do not take it that way. But just want to kind of make it clear who this is for and what the sort of pros and cons are to this. And interestingly, now that we're at this five-year timeline for my thousand bucks, this is the first year where if I wanted to, I could request that initial thousand dollar principal back and have them pay it back to me and then just let the dividends continue to grow that portfolio and pay for itself. So if I wanted to do that, I actually noticed, uh, maybe I just wasn't looking in the right places or looking hard enough, but I was trying to find like a big button or anything I could click to say, Hey, withdraw money or get my principal back or anything like that. I couldn't find it anywhere. And uh, maybe that's intentional. Maybe it's because they don't want you to take your money out. But uh, in order to find it, I just went over here to more and then went to help center. And they've actually got a pretty decent help center. Like you can search for whatever you want and it will probably show you the correct relevant result. So I'm just going to type in withdraw money. Let's see if I can, there you go. How do I withdraw my money? Let's go ahead and click on this. And uh, it looks like to withdraw funds from your account, you'll have to request to redeem your shares from the settings section of your dashboard. During the request process, you'll find information about the expected timeline and totals. So let's go ahead and just click on this, see where this takes us. It says, what to know before you request to redeem your shares. So each of the investment products in your Fundrise portfolio offers are blah, blah, blah. While during normal market conditions, we seek to provide investors with the ability to redeem their shares on a regular basis during times of extreme economic uncertainty or in the midst of a sudden downturn, we likely would determine it was necessary to suspend or limit redemptions for a period of time in order to protect the interests of our entire Fundrise investor community. So this is another thing that uh, I think stock market investing has on Fundrise, because with the stock market, you basically just, you know, get your money when you want it. Whereas with Fundrise, it's like, well, Maybe we don't want to give it to you. We'll see. So it's just another thing to keep in mind if you ever decide to put your money in here. It says redemptions may be taxable. So that makes sense. Early redemption penalties may apply. I'm aware of that. This is not a early redemption. And any share bonuses earned after this request is submitted will not be. Okay, so let's go ahead and click acknowledge and continue. Please choose the option that best describes your goal. Redeem my entire account or redeem a portion of my account. So I'm just going to do a portion. What I want to do is basically just leave the dividend amount in there. Or maybe a better way would be to see the net returns to date. I want to leave that amount in there, but take out my initial principal. So this $834.32, I'm going to leave that in and take out my original thousand bucks just so I've got my cash back. Granted, I'm losing money just due to the, you know, time value of money, but still at least I could walk away with my original principal. And then the rest of this, whether it goes up or down or whatever, it can do whatever it wants. I've got my initial principal back. So I'm just going to redeem a portion of my my account and click continue and 
this shows me all of the shares owned in each e-reit and uh, let's see let's go with redeeming all of the shares that i put into the east coast e-reit because that's my original investment go ahead and click continue i don't actually know how much that equals in terms of dollars i don't think it really shows me until i click this thing please acknowledge the following so it looks like this is just an estimate but it looks like, oh, so apparently the value of those original shares I bought, uh, you know, years ago is worth substantially more than a thousand dollars. This is actually a notable thing because it looks like I could actually redeem a lot more than a thousand dollars because what it's basing this on is the shares, not the dollars I put into it originally. And my money has been tied up in those shares for over five years. So that's kind of a cool thing. I guess that's good. If anything, I, I have access to more cash than I thought I did, but still, even so my goal is to only take out the original thousand dollars that I put in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go back. Interesting. I kind of wish they would just let me say dollar amounts because I don't really know what these share amounts equal. So it looks like maybe if I put, let's see what 70 does. Let's see what that gets me to. So 993, it's almost there. Let's try all of these shares plus the East Coast ones. Let's see what that comes out to. Oh, I see. Okay. So it looks like there is a penalty on this growth E-REIT. This is actually a really good time to talk about this whole issue. So another one of the questions that I hear a lot every year is whenever you reinvest dividends, can you get that money back earlier than five years? Or do you have to wait five years from when that dividend is reinvested? And the answer is the latter, as we can see here. So I don't even really know when the dividends were invested into this particular growth E-REIT, but it was not at the same time when I originally put my money in back in 2017. So you can see here, if I want to redeem these funds now, there's a penalty because I'm doing it before that five-year timeline, as this says here. So that's no good. Let's try to just keep them all with the East Coast E-Read then. Let's go back here. Let's go back to zero. Let's make this 70.5. Let's try this now. Okay, boom. Close enough, $1,000 and 39 cents. So go ahead and click continue. And now they're saying, we would appreciate it if you could let us know why you are requesting to redeem your shares. So I, don't know, I guess I'll go with this one. And then down here, I'm gonna say, I'm planning to invest the funds elsewhere. Go ahead and click continue. Please review and indicate agreement with the following items. We expect to review and process redemption or repurchase requests as normal for the following funds. Uh, however, e-reads and e-funds may suspend redemptions at any time. And as always, there can be no guarantee that you're, huh, interesting. So I don't really like that. Just this idea that like they're potentially holding my money hostage and there's like no guarantee if and when I'm going to get my money back, even though I know the value is there. But I'm sure I agreed to this and probably said it was fine back when I first invested my money. But that language, I don't know. I don't love that. But whatever. It is what it is. And uh, I guess we'll just wait and see if the money comes in and how long that takes. And now we've got a little digital paper trail going. It's interesting though, that uh, they didn't ask where I wanted the money to go. I didn't tell them to send it to my bank account or send me a check or anything like that. So I don't know. I guess we'll see where this money ends up. I do have a personal bank account tied to my uh, Fundrise account that I use to put the money in. So I can only assume it's going to go back to that account. And if we go up here to the transactions section in the menu, uh, we can see now the redemption request is now showing up as one of the transactions. And if we click on this, we can see all of the basic details about it. Looks like, okay, so it is going to go to my bank account. That's the one that I originally signed up with and transferred my money from. You can see the date that it was submitted, the redemption number, whatever that's used for, where it's coming from, expected review date, early July. Holy cow. So that is what, May, June, three months from now? Gosh, I don't know why it takes so long just to review the thing and say yes or no, but I guess that's just another thing to be aware of. I'm assuming it's July because that's when the next quarter ends. So I guess it takes up until the next quarter for them to review it and make that decision. I don't really have any reason to expect it to not work because I'm not aware of any financial distress or economic issues going on that would cause them to say no. But uh, yeah, looks like that's how long it's going to take for them to officially do that. And I mean, again, this is the review date. So I don't know if that means the money would be wired to my account immediately thereafter or if there's like another wait period for that. But either way, that's just another thing to be aware of is that uh, even after the five years, when you say, okay, I'll take some of my money back now, it's not like 
super snappy. It's going to take a little bit of time to get that. I guess that's uh, part of the benefit of me documenting exactly how this works in real life is that we're not going to sugarcoat this. You can see exactly what it's like. In terms of like whether or not I actually do get this money back, you know, for the sake of time, I'm not going to wait until the end of July or August or whenever to finally publish this video. I'm going to publish it right here in April. But if you guys do want to follow up, I'm going to put in the description of this video, I'm going to come back and update it. You know, whenever I do get that money, I'm going to just add some more details about but hey, I got the full amount on this date. Everything was reviewed and approved. I'll just include that information just so you can be aware of that in case you want to follow up and just find out what actually happened. There's also a uh, much more detailed blog post associated with this video that I'm going to have linked beneath this video in the description. So you're welcome to check that out too. You'll find a lot more information there. And again, we have a affiliate link, retipsyourcom forward slash fundrise. If you are interested in this kind of thing, feel free to check it out. And uh, again, I'm not suggesting that you do or don't. Yeah, just trying to document my real life experience so you guys have the benefit of seeing what actually happened in my time here and what the result was and how it works. So overall, I think the website is really well put together. They've got an awesome dashboard. It's really easy to understand. It's even like intuitive and, and kind of fun to browse through it and see what's going on. So I guess the only real final question is, will the money come through? Yes or no? And apparently it's going to take me three months to find that out. So thanks for uh, stopping by. I hope you found this enlightening and entertaining and useful. And uh, I'll look forward to talking to you again next year when I have another update for 2023. And it'll be interesting to see how much the growth slows down or stops as a result of me withdrawing this $1,000. So thanks again. Hope you're all doing well. Talk to you next time.